Hey everybody! Well today we're going to take a look at a brand new set from LEGO. This is from their city line of sets and it's the passenger train. Set number 60337. So this set has 764 pieces and it retails for $180. So yeah, it does retail for a lot of money, but that's because these train sets are always a little bit on the pricey side because they have a lot of electronics and stuff. So this does have some lights included on the front, which is really cool. The last train set didn't have that, I'm pretty sure. It also has the power up remote control system, which I really like. And I think you can also run this on... Uh, an app that you can run it from so that's really cool comes with 16 pieces of curved track and eight pieces of straight track to make this nice big oval if you don't have track already so it's a nice starter set as well also comes with this nice passenger platform here with a ramp and we've got several minifigures here which is really cool so this should be a fun set to put together I do have the old set the one that was the white bullet train set and I really like that and I had no intention of buying another train set but as soon as I saw how cool looking this was I kinda had to have it. On the back here we can see how absolutely sleek this train looks. I just love the long nose on this thing. So that's actually brick built on the white bullet train that was all one piece. So you actually get to build all this which looks really cool. You got the headlights on the front which the other train didn't have either. You can see the driver up inside there in the little window area. Absolutely love how they made this look. This one also has doors which is unusual because a lot of people have always said that they kind of don't like that the trains never had any doors for the minifigures to get on. Well they put them on this one and it looks really really good. Here you can see how the uh, window section on the top near the front opens up so you can get access to the conductor or engineer and then also here is the platform for the passengers to board and depart off of which is really cool. You got some great minifigures right there. Here's the power system where you can see it's got the, the uh, app or the regular um, uh, remote, which I really like that. Another front view right here, which looks really good. And then you can see all the different minifigures right here, which is awesome. And there's actually more room inside the cars, which I like, because the, uh, the old bullet train set didn't have very much room for the, uh, for the minifigures. And then these connect magnetically as well. So yeah, this looks like a really cool set, and I can't wait to get started on it. Let's take a look at what the parts look like. Alright, so there is seven bags total. So there's not a lot of bags, but there's just a lot of stuff in general. As we can see here. Alright, and then we also get all this track. There's a ton of track. I mean, you can see there's a whole bunch of these curved pieces, some straight pieces. We also got this large bottom piece for one of the cars. It's probably the engine, I would imagine. Then we got all these other pieces. There's some parts in here I've never seen before. I don't think I've seen these before. Uh, maybe I have. I don't know. There's the remote control right there. And some more of these parts that are going to make up the passenger cars. This is really cool. We got all of this. This is the, uh, there's a cable right there for the electronics. Another bottom section. Those are the magnetic um, connectors. And then there's the battery box. And that is the motor that runs the whole thing, which is really cool. So there's a lot of stuff in here. I like this newer remote. It looks a little more modern. This is what the original ones used to look like, which works just fine. But I haven't had one of these ones yet, so we'll have to see how that works. All right, well, I guess I'll get started building this beast. I forgot to show the instructions. So there's four different books here. The first one just shows how to build the track itself and the little station. And then the second book consists of building the engine and I guess getting the remote ready to go. And then we got this book which does the first passenger car and then this one. So I guess you can build it with more than one person which is probably the reason behind it. Also Lego is starting to use these more bland looking instruction books. I, I don't remember the reasoning for it but they're, I don't know, they're not as appealing as the old ones. And also I was thinking I would probably get the paper bags for the parts this time but still didn't get those. Here's the uh, stickers. Thankfully there's not too many, but we can see all the different stickers that go with this set. Some of them are probably for the platform and others actually go on the train. They always use those little arrows for their train sets and a little map there too. Alright, I think now we can get started on this thing. Alright, so let's start with the minifigures. Here we have the two employees of the rail line. So we have the engineer on the left and the lady that runs the cool little snack bar that's on the inside of one of the cars, but you can see their nice printing on their uniforms. And I like that their uniforms are the same so that you know they're, they're employees, but you also 
can see that they're slightly different. Maybe their name tags are in a different spot. Also like the uh, hair printing for the, the girl. And then here's the back. Nothing really crazy for the back side as far as the back printing. But they look really good. And then we also have a an alternate face for the girl. And here you can see there's really not much difference between the two faces for the girl. This one may be a little more of a concerned look or maybe a less smiling look. But I don't know. I prefer the smiling look, so I'm going to stick with that. Here's a couple of passengers that we have on here. Now they look like they may be high schoolers, possibly. The girl on the left with her letter jacket print, which looks very, very good. She's also carrying around a laptop, which you can open. It's got like a little details of a keyboard and stuff like that in there. She's got the great hair piece that looks kind of like the Mickey Mouse hair, <laughs> Mickey Mouse ears. Looks very, very cool. This wheelchair is awesome. I love the green wheels that they put on these. And these, this rolls so smooth. I mean, I can't believe how smooth they roll. Um, Lego's always good about making smooth rolling wheels, but that looks excellent. The handles are perfect back here for minifigures to be able to push him. The, the width between them is exactly where they should be for a minifigure to get their hands on those, which is really well thought out. I think this looks really great. I'm not sure if these two have alternate faces. Let me check. So yes, the girl actually has an alternate face, and you can see that she's wearing these great glasses. <laughs> looks pretty cool. Can't decide which face I want her to have. But that's fantastic. This guy here, he has just the face that you see on the front. And then finally, we have these two. And this girl has a fantastic face expression. She's got an alternate face as well. You can see that she's carrying a uh, suitcase and her cell phone, which is a really nice print on that cell phone right there. This bike is fantastic. We've had bikes before. I think the previous train set that I have, the the white bullet train actually came with two of them. This one's a little more built up. I like the little saddlebags that you put on the back here. I'm assuming this guy may be a food delivery guy or something. He's got the sport torso on there, but I don't know. He looks like a guy that would deliver food to people, which is, I don't know, just the impression I got. But it looks really good on there. And the train actually has a spot for you to put that bike, which I thought was really, really neat. Let me show you the alternate face on the girl. And there she is with another smiley face which looks really good, but I think I like the other face better, so I'll be using that. All right, now let's take a look at the train. I almost forgot to show the little platform here. So this is pretty basic. I mean, there's not really a whole lot to this. It's very simple. Um, the white bullet train came with something very similar to this. I don't know if it had this nice ramp, though. It's got a nice adjustable ramp, which is very cool. And you just attach these to the tracks. I'm not sure if I'm going to use these, since I already have some tracks that I've just kind of laid out in one of my spare bedrooms, but um, you can see here we got a nice little bench for the minifigures to sit on, a nice little tree right there, and then there's also this nice map. Those are all clear stickers that go on this set, and they're a little bit tricky trying to make sure you get all the air bubbles out of here. You just got to make sure that when you put those on, I usually, usually use like a soft cloth and just burnish them down to get all the air bubbles out. But this is a nice little thing. I mean, at least if it's a starter kit, you have something for the passengers to wait for the train on. Looking at the engine now, this is such a cool looking, sleek looking train. I absolutely love the way this looks. Now there is some stickers here for the little arrow design that they use on all their trains. And there's a sticker right up here on this corner. I maybe probably could have put it closer to the corner to get rid of that white line in between, but I wasn't really paying attention to that at the time, but I, I think it looks fine. I mean, I'm not even sure the sticker will go that far. A little bit of a window right here, and then on the top, you can see how this looks. There's the power button, and there's the pantograph on the top, and then here's the back. There's a little window back here, which is pretty cool. And then, uh, I don't know if there is a window on there. Maybe it's only on the passenger cars. And this side here looks the same as well. Now, what I really like about this particular train is it's a lot easier to get into the battery compartment. All this does is just come right open like this. That's all that's holding it. And there's the battery compartment right in here. It takes six AAA batteries. You can see all the wires kind of crammed inside there. I'm not sure if you can really get a good look at it. But uh, they're pretty crammed in there. There you go. It's the only thing that I don't like, but it's all right, and it just fits right back on. It's nice and smooth. This part always tries to come open every time I do that. It's like this whole back section doesn't really stay on quite as good, so you can see it coming apart right there again. 
but it's nice. It is a bit of a battery hog though, using six batteries for this part and four more for the remote. Both of the passenger cars are pretty much identical when it comes to the exterior of them. And these look really good too. I like how there's a lot of windows in there. I mentioned before, I uh, am really glad they added these doors since the other trains don't have that, and they're on both sides here. The only thing about these doors, though, is I kind of wish they would have made them, I mean, I don't know how they could have done it, but if they could have slid, like, you know, doors, the, uh, the doors on a train or whatever are kind of like elevator doors, they slide open like that and slide closed, would have been a little more cool than having them open like this. But I think, you know, I don't think Lego's got a, a way, well, they might have a way to make the door slide. I'm sure they got track pieces they could use. But it might have been a, a case of how much room they have in here. Now these are the stickers for the little coffee, um, little snack bar that's in here. And there's also wheelchair access. And those are on both sides. You can see how that looks. That's what the bottom looks like. And then what's nice is these come open really nice and easy. And then on the inside here, you got a nice little sitting area for the uh, minifigures. And then I think the, uh, the wheelchair can sit on that little section there on the inside. You can kind of just see that right in there. But there's definitely more room in the interior on this set than the past ones, which I really like. It gives the minifigures a place to sit. This is really cool right here. It's the little snack bar area. <laughs> and if you look in there, you can see there's a little uh, hot dog. There's also a little coffee machine right in there. I think that's like a little refrigerator down there. And the croissant that's on the uh, table as well. And then we even have a nice uh, little register. It's really cool. So the little uh, lady figure can fit inside that spot. And oddly enough, she sits pretty high up. I mean, you can see how tall she's standing in there versus the customer being way down there. And it's really hard to reach in there to, to have the customer stand. I didn't actually get her to uh, sit on the studs, but you can kind of see the height difference in there. It's very strange the way they decided to do that. See, look at that. She's way down there <laughs> when she's trying to serve that girl. It's kind of an awkward thing, but that's just the design of the way they do these trains. But I'm just happy the fact that they actually added that in there, so that's cool. Here's the other passenger car now, and it looks pretty much exactly like the other one, but we do have the difference of the bicycle uh, access, or you know, you can put the bicycle in there. There's also just a seat, I guess, showing that it's a passenger car, maybe. The doors open as well. And then on the inside here, there's a, a little bit of difference for one thing, you don't have that snack bar, but you do have the nice seating area in here. And then that's where the bike goes on that little rack right inside there. You can see it. And then also on this side, there's another seating area and there's another bike rack. Let me put the bike on there so you can see what that looks like. And there it is. And it takes up the entire area. <laughs> it's funny. They're a little bit limited on space in there, but, you know, it's cool. I mean, I like it. The fact that you can actually put it in there is pretty neat. And I like that there's two sitting areas in there. So, yeah, very, very nice. All right, so I got it all set up and ready to go now. So this train station, I actually bought this quite a long time ago. It's a really cool little train station. You can see here they got passengers waiting. I think there's actually a couple of shops back there. I think there's a Lego store inside there, which is pretty funny. It's got this nice little roof right here then you can see there's a little restaurant snack bar and there's a guy back there cooking and it's pretty cool actually and then you got the uh, other stuff going on here like the little signs that show the destinations and the clock and there's even a bike rack over here and it even came with a taxi and there's a, even a cross a crossing right there all right so let's get this thing ready to, after messing around a little bit with this remote it doesn't matter what color you use on this. There's blue, red, green, all that other stuff. I have it on blue right now. As long as these match, the blue is here and the blue is here, you're on the same channel. So I'm guessing this has different channels, which is really cool. The other thing I was not sure about is I noticed that the headlights weren't on. Well, that's what this side is for. So when you hit this uh, positive button, it turns on the lights. You can just keep hitting it to brighten it up. And I think that's about as bright as it gets. So yeah, that's pretty neat. It, I don't think it mentioned anything about that in the instructions. All right, so we just press the power button here. And you can see the light flashing. And then you press this one on the remote and it flashes. I think you gotta wait for these things to sync up. And when the light turns green, it's kind of washed out on here, but you can see it's a nice green color. Then it's ready to go. 
And then we just press the positive button and each time you press it, it goes faster. So we can take off at this point right now. That's the old train right there. Goes around the corners really nice. I thought the front nose was going to hang off a little bit too far, you know, and then maybe uh, bump into stuff, but I don't think it actually hangs over longer than the original one. It moves very nicely, and these trains have kind of a cool little whine sound. It's like a whining sound, the motors do. We'll speed it up a little bit here. It works really well. I don't want to make it go too fast because when it hits those corners it may fly off the track. I think the fastest I've had it go is about right there. I mean it is a bullet train after all. But you can see it works really good. Of course if you have a really large room this would be a lot better. Sorry for the mess back there. That is all my filming equipment that I had to move in order to film this because normally this room is taken up by all my uh, filming stuff. This is very, very cool. So I guess it turns out that both of these remotes operate on their own signal, which is cool because I was wondering if I could operate the new one with the old one, and you can. They don't interfere with each other's signal, so that's great. I don't have to retire that one there. <laughs> that's fantastic. You can have two of them going. As long as you got them timed out, just fine. Ah, oh, man, these are so cool. So, I have to say, I absolutely love this set, but then again, I've always loved LEGO trains and just trains in general. But when it comes to LEGO, they've always done their trains really well, and the electronics are really well, well done. You know, they're like top-notch. They got really good electronics for this, which is part of the reason why these sets are so expensive. I mean, you don't really get that much as far as the train itself. It's everything else that it comes with. The electronics, of course, you got the receiver up here, the battery pack, the two lights that light up the headlights up here, and then you got the newer uh, 
remote here, which I'm not sure I like this. I, I, I like the old one better. You just turn on the train and it's ready to go. This one you have to turn this on as well as the train and sometimes it seems like it's a little finicky getting synced up. But other than that it works good and at least I can run both trains at the same time as you saw. I also love the coloring on this. This cool green looks really good and the super sleek look of it, especially this nose section right here. I love the way that looks. I do wish that it came with more minifigures. As much as I absolutely love these six minifigures that it comes with, I think it could use about three or four more because I'd like to be able to fill up the seats in all the uh, sections of the train. I mean, you're going to lose two of these figures right here because he's the one that's, um, you know, the engineer driving the train and she's the one that's operating the snack bar in there. So you only actually only have four other ones to fill up the seats and then you want maybe a few to be waiting for the uh, train on the platform here. But you do get a lot with this set. You get a ton of track. I mean, look how much track you get on here. You can make a really decent sized oval if it's a starter set. That's great. Kind of gets you started. If you already have a bunch of track pieces, well, it never hurts to get more because sometimes it's expensive to buy these. And sometimes they're not the easiest things to find either. And I do also like the platform as well. So overall, I'd say this set is fantastic. I absolutely love it. Just know that they're not cheap though. They're going to retail for $180 here in the U.S. starting on August 1st. That's when it officially comes out. I don't know what happened to the summer sets here in the United States. Uh, it seems like everything kind of got delayed and now they're all coming out on August 1st or in August and I, it's just a, a real bummer because you know nobody's going to want to spend a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars or more on all these Lego sets that, that we want to get. So thankfully I was able to get this on eBay um, from a seller in Germany because they're already out in, the, in, the, in uh, all the European countries. They already have all these sets. So I bought it from a seller in Germany. I only paid $135 for it too. Brand new in the box. So I got it for cheaper too. But don't forget there is shipping as well. But I still got a good deal on it. But other than that, I'd say the set is perfect. If you can get it cheaper by buying it online, I would do that. But otherwise, if you want to wait and get the VIP points and all that other stuff, then August 1st is when this is going to come out for $180. All right, well, that's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it, because I sure enjoyed making it. It was fun playing with this train, <laughs> and I'm glad it, I can use both trains, too. That works great. All right, well, if you like this, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and I appreciate you watching very much. Thank you, and I will see you on the next video. So, have a good one.